Welcome to the third session of Design United's conference, Small Measures, Great Impact. The speakers for this session are German architect Jan Glasmier, emerging multidisciplinary designer from Nepal, Dheeraj Manandar, and designer Ayaka Yamashita, co-founder and director of ADEA, a bamboo design art project based in Bagueo, Philippines. This session is being compared by Kavindu Deserum, and moderated by architects Ayush Gangwal and Vrinda Kanwinde. My background is uh, international agriculture and international health. And so pretty much what I have been done during my um, student days was a field work. And that's one. And other things I was in the theater production um, as an ex, like when I was in the university, I love theater. I love creating the things together. It's a, such a powerful medium, like in a theater, it's such a powerful medium to involve a lot of people together. So I, and then when I was in first year master um, degree, like I needed to decide my research site at the same time, I, this is a summer and then I wanted to do the internship but I wanted to do the internship, something more connected to my um, my personal interest, which is theater. So I found that some theater groups in the Philippines, they work for a marginalized community or like um, empowering, um, they use the theater as a tool to empower the community. And there um, I met this uh, instrument, Tongaton. Tongaton is a percussion instrument that it used to be played. Um, for accompanying the healing rituals. And it, this is like such a very beautiful sound. So I just wanted to introduce the sound first. The shape of the instrument is very simple. This is a stomping tube. And then you play with a minimum of six. And then if it's many, it can be like 100, 1000. But what I heard is that since this is a ritual related culture, it is vanishing. And then I thought that, wow, that's a really, this is beautiful culture. And then how come like, and people are not really appreciating. Then, so that was my starting point. And then I thought, this is like my design approach, probably number one. Um, I'm outsider. And then I thought like I wanted to kind of involved in that sort of designing in a big sense that to preserve or transmit this culture to the next generations. But this, I really have to acknowledge that, that I'm at the outside people. And then is it really needed for the local people? And then it's very good that um, the co-founder Edgar and then also his friends, artists actually really said like it, the, they're local people and they said that it's very important for them to like to think about what's the alternatives, what, what they can do for this uh, bamboo cultures. So I think designer tend to design um, something like redesign something or they try to we try to find something we can design, but actually it's also very important to think about the needs as well. Okay. Then, um, so we wanted to, I wanted to know more about that um, instrument. And then we went, I went to a place called the Kalinga. Kalinga is more farther than the Baguio city. So which is around 12 hours a more northern part of the Philippines and it's more mountainous areas. And then, you can look at like very self-sufficient way of lifestyles. Um, but all those cultures are changing um, because of that people migrate to the city, people go to the more exposed to the globalization, global cultures and something like that. And um, while I was researching, I also realized that that bamboo culture, bamboo instrument culture is vanishing, is something that it's more also from the Edgar's point of view. Um, 
and then he's talking about only his village because this area is very hard to people to go different place to place, different village to different village for no reason. So then I, as an outsider, I thought that another um, approach that I thought that I should think about is that maybe we, we should really more think holistically, like how much the culture um, is vanishing or bamboo musical instrument culture is like disappearing in all Kalinga. So next thing what we did is that to go different village to village um, to find out more precisely that how, the, what is a bamboo musical instrument culture and how it's now. Then we found out every single village has a slightly different meanings than uh, naming and then usage for the bamboo musical instruments. This is a part of our research. And then I will just show a partial. So after I finished that research, I thought that, of course, I can wish we can continue uh, preserving, like researching those areas and then try to archive those um, vanishing cultures. But at the same time, I realized that young, we have to find that other way to look at the culture. And then that's the time we started this a new approach at a bamboo jewelry project. The initial idea was that to really provide a different way of looking at the culture and then let young generation to be more interested in the culture, their own culture. So the concept was very simple, intangible to tangible. <laughs> so the bamboo music instrument shape, and then of course it's a bamboo, so like we use the bamboo as a material to create again the, the jewelries. And other reason why I chose that jewelry as a medium was jewelry is something people wear. And then you can tell the story. Like people will ask the questions like, and if you see the, some interesting design of the jewelry, the conversations will start from there. I thought that's one interesting, um, like jewelry is an interesting medium. And then other thing was that jewelry itself already has a like, positive connotations. Uh, it, people that never think like a jewelry is something dirty, like in, somehow like a jewelry has a people wear it for uplift your feelings or something to make yourself, I don't know, beautiful. <laughs> and then, so I thought that bamboo in those areas still people consider it's not high end materials or it's more like poor people's materials. And then I really wanted to change that kind of image. So using it, the bamboo as a, something more in different prison representation, I thought that Jewelry can work in different way, can show different things. And other things I think it's very important um, is a process of making. Since we wanted to really tell like bamboo musical instrument making techniques, uh, we apply that bamboo musical instrument, the making techniques to the jewelry making as well. And then In the end, we exhibit all the jewelries, jewelries, uh, um, jewelries, uh, research about the musical instruments, and then the processes, and then also you utilizing all that our um, skills and talent in one showcase, which is an exhibition style. So we try to do every at least like every year to do conduct an exhibition. Another very, very important thing is that jewelry, of course, might have a longer term, long, long um, impact for the younger generation to be interested in, in about, about their own culture. But we want 
to the village and we asked that to share their knowledge about bamboo musical instruments. So I thought that in the short term also, like we do, we should do something. So I went to, went back to the, it's a giving back project. We went back to that the communities, we did the research and then did the workshop for them. But actually we did a workshop is not the right way to say it. We facilitated the workshop for the elders can teach to the younger generations. I think that is a very important approach too, that elders always wanted to teach uh, to their children uh, or grandchildren about their cultures, but they usually do not have a place or space or um, opportunity. We decided that we will set the, the workshop, but they will be the one to teach. So here's them, some of them. Okay, so the next project, I would like to introduce our lot of a culture exchange project. So uh, we do bamboo musical instrument making, playing, and then also a uh, more installation kind of project in, in different parts of the world. Um, so this is in Japan, uh, it's a cocoon chair making and we start from the bamboo uh, cutting to like into to share that bamboo wisdom and bamboo techniques from the Philippines to the Japanese rural communities and then we did that kind of culture exchange. We did um, also the stage making in, in other parts of the community in Japan. Uh, this is a music festival making and then um, this is another case, another um, project in wellness space making in a uh, rural area of Japan. This was a two weeks workshop with the community. And I brought the two uh, artisans from the Philippines to be a facilitator for these workshops. And what this, but my point for this project is not just like a simple cultural exchange. It's not just a uh, Philippine artist to share what their knowledge is. I and then the Japanese people to sh uh, share like uh, their rural village culture or something like that. That's of course, but most another important point is that the lot of I really wanted that artisans themselves to realize the importance of their culture by themselves, and then I created this workshop, and then many of the cases like local people from Japan will ask that the Filipino artist that why you, why, why this technique is like, and how do you do that? For them, it's very simple things, but for the Japanese people or like for the people from the outside, it's very new things. So I really wanted to create like vice versa exchange kind of um, workshop style. And then, so those kind of thing we did in Nepal, Myanmar, and then um, this was also in India. This is a music, uh, bam bamboo musical instrument making and playing, but um, in the end, we. <laughs> So 
but this other uh, project called the Bamboo Groko Village. Uh, why I'm sharing this one is that uh, this project, uh, we try to not to do it in just two countries. Like we include like more, all we develop that uh, workshop modules to motivate participants to discover their culture and encourage uh, innovation by creating miniature. This is a miniature bamboo house making modules, but in order to make that module itself, I involved the three countries people, and then we expect that module itself evolved that to, we can apply it in different parts of the Asia. And so in order to develop the workshop modules itself, we tried it in the three countries, uh, tested in the different communities in Japan, Philippines, and Myanmar to see how that module works. And uh, our, our team was from the three countries. And then now I just wanted like other approach that I think is very important for our project is that every project we really um, collaborate with the different peoples. And then for this project, like, it's what's uh, three countries and then, but for other projects, like, um, different people, the, different local communities and then so, I think it's for our design project. It's very important. People are very important, and who I uh, work with is always um, something I strive. I try to be very like uh, carefully choose and then work with um, like-minded people. And in order for me to find those um, people's and then uh, projects, I try to be. Also, I myself researching in different parts of the world. And then um, I went to so far, like in quite many places in the world uh, by getting a fellowship and kind of things like that. And then, so I'm hoping like the people who are listening to this um, presentations in the future, if I can work with, like I'm really, I would be, I would love to. So <laughs> that's the reason I share this, but, and then, um, I also wanted to share um, our work in the Philippines as well, but the, here my point is that a lot of the work in the Philippines is actually happens with collaboration with the different sectors, uh, government, uh, private corporations and all those kind of things. And then I think it's very important for especially creating that uh, festivals. In Philippines, we do create the festivals and the placemaking. It's very, very important who uh, the government or um, yeah, government involved then, um, especially in the Philippines case. So this was, uh, we made that 1000 bamboo wind chimes in one trails in Baguio City with the collaboration of the Department of Tourism. And uh, every year we do um, celebrate that Cordillera uh, Bamboo Day. Uh, we started from very small, um, like this, but every year you evolve, then different uh, community partners um, came in. And then I think this was in 2018 that we could do the placemaking um, programming, cultural programming, like installation making, bamboo musical instrument playing, and then the performance and everything. And this is a, one of the main uh, part of the city, Baguio City. And then last year, finally, um, this was my dream project that I really wanted to do the theater production because I believe the theater is in a, such a um, um, mix media um, design initiatives. Like you can, you can, the theater design, like stage design, costume designs, um, prop designs, a lot of things that like, you, know, you can um, add. And then we could collaborate with the Department of Education and then five uh, high schools, different high schools. So it's, and then this year we did it in that very small, uh, just because of the COVID but I hope that um, this initiative somehow evolve more and then we can do more like in a festival like. And uh, I will just show that. Um, <laughs> Ito kat tayo dito yung celebration para iti ekwa, i uh, healing. Dito yung maralamid nga pandemic tayo dito yung lubong. Kat sa pay kuma dito yung aramidin tayo nga basit nga uh, ritual kat uh, dito iti may contribute tayo 
is a uh, world uh, healing process. So, ito'y Agyama Nakman and uh, thank you so much for your uh, presence and thank you for joining the Bam World Bamboo Day. Thank you for uh, your time and uh, I hope uh, we will enjoy and let's uh, continue uh, join our spirit tap no uh, maka arami tayo pa iti uh, naduma pa yung uh, pagsayatan uh, with the inspirations of this uh, bamboos niya. So, adu dagi na ibagbagatan tayo uh, na pangalaan tayo yung ijay inspiration. So this was our small uh, celebration for this year and then uh, why I'm sharing this one is because that this was our first time to uh, use the venue of this creative hub. This is our next project. We are now developing this almost whole areas um, to make it more sustainable community development and we are trying to create that educational space and then um, this one that you see on the top of the rock is the first building that we are trying to develop as um, a domain office. And then eventually we are hoping to create that um, the school, craft school, bamboo school and the music schools. And then of course, like more um, cult, bamboo culture and a culture in general, like wisdom sharing up spaces. And so we just started, but like, our first um, the, um, building is um, still ongoing project. Like during this COVID time, like we're st stuck in this place and we're trying to develop a little bit. And then this is just a bridge that uh, we made, just made with the bamboos. And then I just wanted to share, um, if you cross this bridge, you can access to this um, creative hub space making. And then we are all making by our own hands. And um, since it's COVID, we cannot work with so many people, um, only two or three people, but like, we are hoping that um, to complete soon. Yes, so those were our approaches. And then we're hoping that our um, approaches will be all uh, combined together in one place. And then, but still we will be more fluid and continuously working with the people from different parts of the world. And then in the end, I just wanted to share that other medium like we are using for delivering, like sharing our um, experience and knowledge. This is like, we have produced a book. And then from next year in Japan, our stories and in our activities will be on the national level a textbook which is I'm really uh, honored and appreciate so that um yeah so thank you very much for listening and then if you're interested in our project I'm very happy to um to collaborate with you and then so and then we are still we don't have yet the plan for the building architecture plan for the let's say the cross school or like um anything so we're still open and then <laughs> if any of you can collaborate with us in the future like please contact us and then thank you thank you so much for this uh, opportunity today thank you uh...